episode is all about milk. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Joshua Black coming to you once again with a brand new episode of the Urban Black Vegan, episode number. All right, so this episode we're talking about milk. We're talking about all the alternatives that are available to you when you stop drinking cow's milk. There's so many different alternatives. We're gonna talk about the best alternatives, or at least three alternatives that I enjoy personally. But first, real quick, let's talk about cow's milk. That stuff is just nasty. Not only, even if you may like the taste, it's just nasty for you. It is not, and should not be considered a health food. We've been bamboozled to believe that cow's milk is actually a health food when we don't think about all the detrimental effects that cow milk can have on the human body, okay? First, let's, here's a few points. First of all, the cholesterol and the saturated fat alone should make you say, I don't wanna drink that. Then, there's the calories. Yep. Crazy amount of calories in a cup of cow's milk. I believe it's about 180 calories in one cup of cow's milk. That's crazy, so you're getting that, you're getting the cholesterol, and then you get the whole issues with lactose. Now, 65% of humans are lactose intolerant. It's even higher in East Asian descent, people. I mean, this is crazy. And the fact that we have so many alternatives, we can just mix cow's milk automatically. And usually when you're transitioning to veganism, it's probably one of the easier things to transition from, like regular milk to plant-based or non-dairy milk. It's probably one of the easier transitions to make. Okay, let's get right into it. Now, the most popular alternative to cow's milk is soy milk. I mean, it's available everywhere. Soy milk comes from an ancient crop that's thousands of years old. But the thing about soy milk, it wasn't introduced into the, into the United States until about 1980, 79, 80, by a, a Hong Kong company called Vita Soy. Vita Soy introduced it into the San Francisco market, and as we all know, it just blew up after that. It's all over the place. You will find soy milk just as easily as you can find cow's milk. It's available everywhere, corner stores, um, Rite Aids, drug stores, it's all over the place. So that's a good thing when you're trying to make that transition. It makes it a lot easier when you're trying to look, look for that. Now, the other good thing about soy milk is that it's something you can actually make at home. You're not gonna keep a cow in your backyard, but you can definitely make soy milk at home. It's just a matter of taking soybeans, so soaking them, <clears throat> um, crushing them up, mashing them up, crushing them up until they become like this consistency that's like liquidy and milky and just, but you have to make sure you add heat to this process. See, the heat is important. It kills the protein inhibitors. Now these protein inhibitors are bad for our pancreas. So you have to make sure if you're doing this process at home, if you have the time, I don't. But if you have the time to make your own soy milk, just make sure you heat it somewhere in the process. Some other good things about soy milk, it has just about as much protein as a um, regular cow's milk. So you're not losing anything there. You're not, and you also don't have to worry about the calories, nor do you have to worry about the cholesterol, nor do you have to worry about the saturated fat. These are all good things. Just a comparison in calories. A cup of soy milk has about 60 calories. Now there's some brands you can find as low as about 30. I do recommend the unsweetened because you don't need the added sugar. If you want to sweeten it, you can add a little cinnamon. Splenda, if you do Splenda, whatever you choose. Um, but there's ways to sweeten it. Also, it lowers the bad cholesterol. It raises the good cholesterol. And this information is based on a study by the American Cardiology Journal. Also, another point with soy, that it lacks in vitamin D. Now, the good thing for us, vegans or non-cow milk drinkers, is that with soy milk, it's usually fortified. So the manufacturers are adding in vitamin D, they're adding in other essential nutrients that are needed that soy milk may be lacking. For those who are allergic to soy or who rather not mess with soy because of stuff they've read or research they've done, I understand. There's almond milk. 
but here's the thing about almond milk. Now a lot of people definitely prefer, well I'm not gonna say a lot of people, I don't have no factual study, but a lot of people from, you know, in my circle, prefer almond milk to soy milk. They just like to taste better. But here's the, some facts about almond milk that you may not know. Almond milk is not really dense in nutrients. It doesn't really have a lot of nutrients in it. And um, the reason for that is that the way almond milk is made, I mean, you can make almond milk at home. It's just a matter of taking almonds, mushing them, smashing them, what have you, with water, and then straining that through a cheesecloth. Voila, you have almond milk. Now, yes, you can then sweeten it yourself, add your own stuff. Now, this is all if you have time to do all this stuff. Some people don't have that kind of time. Some people are crafty and just have time on their hands, and they, you know, they're making their own almond milk. More power to you. But here's the facts about almond milk that you're buying off the shelf. It's like low in fiber. It's low in protein. Like an eight ounce, um, an eight ounce cup of almond milk has about one gram of protein and fiber. That's like nothing. And another, another point about almond milk I, I found interesting when doing this research for this is that based on a information from an almond milk manufacturer that only about 2% of the milk actually contains almonds. So there's about 2% almonds in like a half gallon of almond milk. That was interesting and the rest of it is basically water, like added nutrients because most almond milk is fortified. Um, you know, so although that is the case so you're getting like 98% water and nutrients and only 2% almonds that might bother some people they might not be cool with that i'm cool with that this i'm cool with that for those who have nut allergies who are allergic to almond milk there's another alternative which is coconut milk now coconut milk has a distinct taste now you have to like coconut because it has a definite flavor of its own but here's the twist on coconut milk there's a couple good things about coconut, coconut milk. You can make coconut milk yourself. It's basically nothing but the fleshy part of the coconut, add some water, and then it's just strained through a, um, I don't know, like a cheesecloth or something like that. Very simple to make coconut milk at home. Once again, if you have the time, now here's the deal with coconut milk. Now, although it's um, way better than cow's milk, no doubt but amongst the three milks that we're talking about coconut milk is super high in fat it's super high in fat it has about 30 grams of fat in eight ounce cup that's a lot of fat and if you're taking in avocados through the week um like i love avocados personally you're doing the avocados a couple times a week um hopefully you've cut out the oil and things of that nature you could be taking them just too much. I'm just saying be careful with the the intake because although this is good food, good for you, anything done overboard is just done, is just too much. Except for like greens and stuff like that. You can just eat tons of those. But things like coconut milk, soy milk, you have to be mindful. That's what I'm trying to get across. You have to be mindful and every milk isn't for everybody. You know, every milk is not for everybody. Now, a couple more things about coconut milk, a couple good things. Coconut milk is high in vitamin B, it's high in vitamin E, it's high in iron, and it's high in magnesium. These are good things. These are definitely good things. And if anything, the good definitely outweighs the bad. The only bad thing I can see, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong down below. The only thing I can see that's bad about, that are, that's a little troubling about coconut milk is that high fat content. So just be mindful. Now, so with all three laid out, coconut milk, almond milk, and soy milk, what's the best? Isn't that what you really wanna know? It depends on what your needs are. The best for you may not be the best for me. The best for her may not be the best for him. So depending on what your needs are, that's how you determine what's the best. I would love to know what type of milk do you drink? What do you recommend? And don't just tell me, oh, I like, I don't know, I like hemp milk. Give like, I like hemp milk because why? Let's share that information. Let's help each other.